Let me ask you, what if in the blink of an eye, millions of people all over the earth disappeared and were gone? What if a large coalition of nations gathered from the north of Europe and part of Africa and tried to invade Israel? Did you know that all of these events are predicted to happen in the future according to the Bible? Today, three biblical scholars who know Greek and Hebrew and have written 157 books between them are our guests. They are Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Dr. Ron Rhodes, and Jeff Kinley. It is interesting that in the polls of the Pew Research Center, they show that four in 10 Americans believe we are living in the last days. Further, they found out that 70% of evangelical Christians believe Christ could return during their lifetime. Where does the Bible talk about these things? Today, you will find out on this special edition of The John Ankerberg Show. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ankerberg, and I've got three of the best biblical scholars in our country on biblical prophecy with us today. They are Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Jeff Kinley, and Dr. Ron Rhodes. And they uh, have written, between the three of them, 157 books on biblical prophecy. And they also went to schools where uh, they were actually made to, for their degrees, take Hebrew and Greek. And uh, not just kind of gloss over it, but you actually had to learn it, be able to say it, and be able to do it on tests. And uh, so that's the guys that we got sitting across from me. Uh, scholars that have written 157 books, which is really hard for me to uh, believe, and they're all good ones. And uh, again, I want to start with a Pew statistic today, and then I want to jump off of what Americans are saying into what the Bible is saying. And we're actually going to do a quick outline of the book of Revelation. If you've never heard that, there are specific things I want the guys to talk about. We could actually do eight programs on the book of Revelation. We're not going to do the whole thing. But I want to talk about, according to the Pew Research Center guys, four in ten U.S. adults believe humanity is living in the end times. Now, this isn't just church people. This is right straight across America. People that go to church, people that don't go to church. They believe we're living in this thing called the end times. I want to hook up their thoughts of the end times with what the Bible says about end times. And I want to talk about what God thinks about the end times and why Americans that don't even go to church in their heart have a feeling we're in the end times. Something's going to happen. Something's wrong in our country. Is America coming to the end as a nation? and why do Americans feel that might be a possibility. But we're going to start with some of the outlines of Revelation. And uh, Ron, I want to come to you because there's a quick outline given in uh, 119 of the first chapter of Revelation. And tell us what it is. Well, that's right. If you're going to study the book of Revelation, let's look at the mini outline that Revelation itself provides for us. God tells John, write therefore the things that you have seen, the things that are, and the things that will happen after this. So that's three different areas of thought. Now the things that John has seen refers back to his encounter with the glorified Jesus in chapter 1. The things that are, present tense, refers to the seven churches of Asia Minor that John talks about in Revelation 2 and 3. And then the things that take place after this refers to chapter 4 through 22. In fact, John, you might remember that in chapter 4, verse 1, John hears a voice that says, Come up here, I will show you what will take place after this. Yeah. And so very clearly, we've got that outline that guides us in how to understand and how to frame the book of Revelation. Yeah, what I love about the book of Revelation, guys, just briefly, is the fact... John, his buddy that had leaned on his chest right at the Last Supper and uh, talked with him because he was such close buddies with Jesus, uh, comes to heaven 
and sees the glorified Jesus that's in heaven, God the Son. And instead of putting his arms around him and saying, boy, I'm so glad to see you, he fell at his feet as though dead. Yes. We're going to talk about that sometime when we do this whole book of Revelation, but I'm just saying the picture of Jesus that people have, you've got to recognize when you die, you're going to see that Jesus, and it's not the meek and mild Jesus. It's going to be the glorified Jesus, God. But then we've got a little area where he talks about uh, seven churches. And these churches pertain to the kind of the churches we have today. They're kind of examples of what we've got today. Uh, five of them have problems, and we want to talk about those problems because God says, I don't like that. That's sin. And two have actually uh, really served him, and he honors them. That's there. People can read it in the first part of the Revelation. But the reason that I wanted to do this quick outline is that uh, there are three major judgments that come in the book of Revelation. And here's the reason I want us to talk about what these are. In the first three and a half years, you've got the seven seals that are open. And then somewhere in the middle, the three and a half years, period of time, because there's a seven year period of time, according to Daniel, uh, the prophet who said that time period is going to be tough for the whole world. Uh, three and a half, this person called the Antichrist, who's a real political leader that is indwelt by Satan. And he does all the tricks that a real political leader would do, but he's also empowered by Satan. And he makes a deal with the Jews to protect them, because it happens after the rapture, and the fact is he signs a deal, a peace treaty, that I'll protect you from the world. We talked about last week that the rapture's already happened, and the fact is, therefore, uh, the Muslim nations are basically decimated, and so the Jews can rebuild their temple, and uh, so he probably says, hey guys, we're gonna let you rebuild the temple, and uh, the Dome of the Rock can come down, or it's probably already come down because of what happened in the chaos of the rapture, uh, or the Ezekiel 38 war, which was ahead of that. And uh, so all of a sudden, we get to this uh, point that in the first three and a half years, you've got seven seal judgments, then right in the middle somewhere, and this is debatable where it starts, you've got the trumpet judgments, and then you've got the bowl judgments. And the reason I want you to talk about what these judgments are is not just to scare people, I want you to realize uh, a question that we're going to hit at the very end that uh, we've got one of our guys. Are we close to the end of America? Mm -hmm. And it talks about what's going on in America, and we hooked that up with the Pew Research in terms of what people say, Christian, non-Christian, and they all say we're in living in the end times, mm -hmm. and, and that blows my mind. Hey, this is Jeff, and I wanted to let you in on a few of our Christmas offers. First, we have a set of three books that John specially picked out for our current series, Iran, Israel, and End Time Events. The three books, authored by the three guests we have on the program, are available for a gift of just $30. And that's for all three books, so it works out to just $10 a book. Then second, we have a new series with Lee Strobel that we've not yet aired on television. In it, Lee and John explore the historical evidence for the events surrounding Jesus' birth and they share what it means for us today. This four-program series, Who is the Baby in the Manger, is available either on Blu-ray DVD or as a digital download. To access these Christmas offers, just head to the link in the description. And from everyone here at The John Ankerberg Show, we wish you and your families a Merry Christmas. But I want to talk about it from God's point of view, is if we are in the end times, why are we in the end times? What did we do to get in the end times? And I think we all realize that America has changed. Even since I was a kid living in Chicago, when I was in eighth grade, I used to take the bus down to the L tracks and the L tracks all the way downtown. I was just a little tyke, okay? And I was carrying my big drawing cart, went through the Art Institute, studied there, came back in the afternoon, took the L train all the way back to the bus and the bus, it was like an hour and a half trip. My mother let me do that when I was just in the eighth grade. I wouldn't let two of you guys do that right now. 
things have changed in our country and people realize that. They're talking about rape and murder and they're talking about breaking into stores and they're talking about the bad leadership we have in America and how we have inflation rising and all of these things might be the reason they're talking about it but God has his own reasons for saying we're in that time and Mark let me come to you we have seven seal judgments and uh, the book of Revelation says there's a book it's like this is the things that are to come these are judgments that God can unleash and uh, nobody's found to, to can open these books except Jesus Christ himself, mm -hmm. the Lamb of God. He comes over and he opens them up. And what comes out of these seven judgments? Well, I think that book is actually, it's a will. It's the inheritance. In other words, once that book's opened, Jesus is going to come back and take the inheritance. Yeah. He's going to receive the kingdoms of this world. And so it's ultimately moving towards this positive end. But there's a time of judgment as this scroll is opened by Jesus. And there, there are seven of these seals that are opened. And the first four are often called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They're pictured by riders on different colored horses. And the first one is a rider on a white horse. And that's usually viewed as the, the Antichrist. It's, he's going to come on a white horse. Remember at the end of the book of Revelation, in Revelation 19, Jesus comes back from heaven on a white horse. So he's a, a false Christ, a false Messiah who rides forth on the earth after the rapture. And he's going to bring some kind of peace to the earth during that time because it says he has a bow but no arrows. Hmm. And then the next rider is a rider on a red horse, and it says he comes to take peace from the earth. Well, you can't take peace unless there was peace to begin with. So the second rider, this red horse, is going to be the outbreak of, of wars in, in the world. What Jesus said in Matthew 24 when he talked about wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And then, of course, warfare often leads to famine. You have a rider on a black horse, and this black horse speaks of uh, the famine that's going to engulf the earth during that time. And then there's a, the, the fourth horseman is a rider on a pale horse. The, the color there, the Greek word is chloros. It's kind of a, a sickly green color of a, of a decomposing corpse. And it pictures there in that one judgment, this fourth seal, 25% of the people in the world will die. One-fourth of the earth. Yeah, because even if you start off with war, you got people dying there. Right. If you have famine, you have some more people That's dying. Right. And then apparently you have big time people dying as a result of what's happened. Keep on going. By the way, in that fourth judgment, one of the things that uh, is, is a, the cause of that is plagues or pandemics. Yep. And so we, we see that on, on the rise. And, and We've already gone through that. a big pandemic worldwide, and right. we're talking more of that kind of thing. So this is a foreshadow of that. The fifth seal is martyrs, uh, believers who will be killed. So after the rapture takes place, everybody left behind on earth will be unbelievers. But through the preaching of the gospel and through um, books that have been left behind and sermons and messages people have heard, many people after the rapture will come to faith in Jesus. Hopefully, that's part of the good news. Hopefully this tape, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's part of the good news that there's going to be great revival during the great tribulation period. Many people will come to faith in Jesus. But so they'll be martyred. They're going to be martyred. And that's called the judgment there, I think, because... When these people are killed, that's going to increase the judgment on those who've killed them, who've taken their lives. Well, we've seen some horrible uh, things happen to believers. Yeah. We're starting to see some anti-Christian sentiment come our direction sure. because in terms of us holding Jesus' ethical program, the world of our day does not hold to what Jesus said no adultery and all kinds of things. And the fact is we've just bypassed that. The statistics all show it right. and our people know it. There's persecution in many parts of the world today. And in America, we're beginning to experience what I call low grade or kind of soft persecution. It's gonna escalate. And after the rapture takes place, it's gonna be, it's gonna really be accelerated. And then the, the sixth seal is cosmic disturbances going to be, the moon's going to turn to blood, the sun's going to lose its light, um, asteroids are going to come down and hit the earth. I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a, a terrible time of, of judgment really from above. And then after that, that uh, sixth seal is opened, there's kind of a parenthesis there in the book of Revelation in chapter 7, where he pictures a, a number of people you can't even count who are going to be saved. 144,000 Jewish men, evangelists, 
will come to Jesus during that time. And then finally, when we get to chapter 8 of Revelation, the beginning of that chapter, that's then when uh, the seventh uh, seal is opened. So there's kind of a, a parenthesis or kind of a pause between the sixth seal and the opening of that seventh seal. And then the seventh seal when it's opened, then contains seven trumpet judgments. So you kind of, you think you're at the end here with the seventh seal, but the seventh seal now unveils a series of seven more judgments. Yeah, let me just come in here too. And between every one of these judgments, you know, the seals, if you think of old scrolls that were uh, important to dictators and rulers in the old world, say Roman Empire, those seals were bound up and uh, they were stamped. So you had some information, and the emperor said, nobody open this, stamp it, and then stamp it. And so you had seven of these, these scrolls that were closed and sealed. And that's the kind of thing that Jesus was opening. Each one of these things that had information, the seal was broken by Jesus, and out came these judgments. Now, I also want to throw in a word here. Uh, Ron, the fact is, after every one of these judgments happened, there was a pause. Yes. And the Bible says that a lot of people came to Christ, but the Bible more emphatically says there were a lot of people that turned against God and hardened their heart. And I can see why people would turn to God, but I don't get this idea of people hardening their heart against God. I think that one of the things we're going to see in the, in the tribulation period is calloused hearts. You know, when you rake the lawn, your hand gets calluses and it becomes insensitive to pain. Well, likewise, the human heart can become calloused and insensitive to the things of the spirit. I think that's going to hit at a pandemic level during the tribulation period. But let's not forget that Satan is the God of this world. And one of the things that Satan does is he blinds the minds of unbelievers. He doesn't want people coming to Christ during the tribulation period. But I like what you said. There's a period of time between each of these judgments. That shows that even in the darkest period of human history, which is the tribulation period, God still shines his light of grace, opening the door to salvation. We do read in Revelation 7, that there's going to be a great multitude of believers. Part of that might result from people who ponder these judgments. Some of it might result from the 144,000 Jewish witnesses, or perhaps the two prophetic witnesses of Revelation 11. But God will continue to shine His light. What's fascinating too, John, is that when you, th you see this narrative in Revelation, concurrently what's happening is you see the great grace of God still being poured out on humanity during a time when His judgments are also being poured out. But also, you see human hearts being hardened at that time. In fact, by the time we get to seal 6 uh, in Revelation chapter 6, then we have humanity hiding from God. And they're all acknowledging that all these judgments are coming not from some atmospheric anomaly or from some alien force, but from the Lamb and Him who sits on the throne. And so they all acknowledge that God exists and that He's the source of these judgments. That tells us this, John, there's not a single atheist on planet Earth during the tribulation. And you yeah. know what's also interesting in relation to that is that earlier in the New Testament, we read that the Father has assigned all judgment to the Son. Christians will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Unbelievers will appear before the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. It's also Christ who is unleashing these judgments upon the earth. That's, right. yep. That's a different Jesus than a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, Jeff, mm -hmm. in your great book that we're offering along with the other two guys, is the fact is uh, people ask the question, is, are, are we coming to the end of America? Are we going to go into the uh, pile of nations that have lived, existed, were terrific, and then all of a sudden declined. And yeah, a lot of people say that's happening and we're watching it and it may get worse. But the God of heaven looks at it and says, I want to look at the sin. What is your reaction to me? Atheism is going up. Unbelief is going up. People are leaving the churches. Uh, People that say they're Christians aren't even reading their Bible, according to the Pew Research. And uh, God looks at all of this and then looks at our sin. And it's interesting that all three of you guys in your books, you know, we got 157 books here, 
And I've gone through these books, and the fact is all three of you say that there comes a point in all of the nations of history where they're coming toward a line where the God of, of history looks and says, you know, you started out great and you had uh, maybe even good morals and you treated the Jews halfway correctly and uh, then you passed a point where God says you passed into judgment where I get into the judging of destroying nations. And what we're going to be talking about is have we passed the line? Are we in the area where God could judge America? All three of you say we're way past the line where God should have judged our nation. Now, we're out of time this week. We're going to pick up Revelation next week with these judgments, but I want to end with a good word. People that go into the book of Revelation, you'll find out that the rapture has taken place and the fact is so believers are gone. So unbelievers are left, but the Word of God is still left and tapes like this and books and all kinds of things, plus God Himself brings in witnesses to talk about the gospel and people get saved. But the majority of people are unbelievers and there might be unbelievers that are watching our program right now and Jeff, mm -hmm. I want you to talk to them. Yeah. One day you were an unbeliever, but the fact is you decided that you were a sinner and you realized that Christ died for your sins and He would forgive you freely. It's called grace if you would just come to Him and admit that you're a sinner and ask Him to come into your life. You'd receive Him and believe on Him. Would you say a prayer for our audience today for the people that are saying, I need peace with God. I need to know when I die that I'm going to heaven. I know I'm not in trouble with God. I want Him to forgive me my sins and I want to know that He says I'm okay. Would you say a prayer for those people right now that they could say with you, and if they want to, they can invite Christ into their life. Absolutely. Say that prayer for them. Yeah, just keep in mind the book of Revelation is God's last word that He wanted us to know. And He has a very special message in there for you. And part of that message is that you can know Jesus Christ. So pray with me right now and see if this prayer expresses the desire of your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I admit I am a sinner and I need salvation. I receive you right now and believe on your son and the sacrifice that you made for me to forgive me of my sins, to take me to heaven when I die, and to make me the kind of person that you want me to be. And God, help me to pursue you in my life from this point on until I see you face to face. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you believed you... on Jesus through that prayer, then by the authority of God's Word, you are a child of God. And I agree with Jeff. And folks, I have to say thank you for joining us this week. We're going to continue looking at Revelation says is coming. Jesus says it's like the beginning of birth pangs, okay? A wife that gets pregnant, the fact is uh, when the child starts to come, you have little pains and they're spread out. But as you go along toward the birth, all of a sudden they get closer together and tougher. And that's what he's talking about in the book of Revelation. And we're going to talk about the second set of seven judgments, which are the trumpet judgments. And then we're going to get into the big ones, bowl judgments. When I say big, they're all big. But the fact is, it gets worse. And we're going to talk about exactly what we're talking about right now. How does God look at our world? And where is his mercy? And where does he say that's enough is enough? Thanks for being with us this week. Join us next week and uh, stay with me for a moment because I got a personal word for you in just a moment.